Good morning, everyone, and welcome as we come together for our Wednesday Eucharist. Today we're using the readings from last Sunday in the Book of Common Prayer, the first Sunday after Christmas. Our service begins on page 67 of the Book of Common Prayer, which you can download on the National Church website in the link that you can find in the description of this video. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who hast given us thy only begotten Son to take our nature upon him and at this time to be born of a pure virgin, Grant that we, being regenerate and made thy children by adoption and grace, may daily be renewed by thy Holy Spirit. Through the same Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the same Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. O God, who makest glad with yearly remembrance of the birth of thy only Son, Jesus Christ, grant that as we joyfully receive him as our Redeemer, we may with sure confidence behold him when he shall come again to be our judge, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Epistle from the Galatians. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all, but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the Father. Even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because ye are sons, God hath sent forth the spirit of his Son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son, and if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Here ends the first lesson. The gradual, we will read responsively at the appointing. The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand, until I make thine enemies thy footstool. The Lord shall send the rod of thy power out of Zion. Be thou ruler, even in the midst among thine enemies. Thy people offer themselves willingly in the day of thy power. In the beauties of holiness, from the womb of the morning, thou hast the dew of thy youth. The Lord swear and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel is written in the first chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, beginning at the 18th verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. The birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When, as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, 
For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Let us recite the articles of our faith in the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, through whom all things were made, who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father with the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. May these words glorify God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. For our reflection this morning, we're taken to the gospel lessons of the time of Joseph being visited in a dream by an angel and learning about Mary. What I wanted to talk about today is how different our Christmas stories really are. We are all accustomed, I think, to imagining a nativity scene that has probably a little wooden box with hay in it and a little baby laid there with Mary and Joseph on either side, inside of a stable, a barn-looking building, usually with an angel on top or maybe a star. And then we have three wise men off on one side and perhaps some shepherds and sheep off on the other. It's a very familiar scene and most of us have it in our homes. But it's actually a weaving together of two very distinct stories. And I think that's important for people to understand is that the Christmas story that we hear is very different in Luke's gospel than it is in Matthew's gospel, and for two very important reasons. These gospels are writing to bring forth the themes that they're going to be talking about throughout all of the gospel. It really isn't as concerned about the actual historical life of Jesus. In fact, we don't know much about the actual historical birth of Jesus, what we know are these two stories that are distinct. We only have them in Matthew and in Luke. Mark makes no mention of the birth, and John's mention of the birth is no more than the Word became flesh and lived among us. And immediately we jump into John the Baptist. Mark jumps into John the Baptist right away, which signifies something important, that for those two Gospel writers, that's where the critical message begins. But Matthew and Luke provide a little more context to begin their Gospels. So in Luke's Gospel, as I mentioned before, we have the theme of Mary being the one that talks with the angel. 
It is through a woman that God's message of salvation is revealed and fulfilled. It's also shepherds who are in the fields, working class people who hear the song of the angels and come to worship. What most of you may not realize is that if you carefully read Matthew's gospel, those elements are not there. There are no shepherds. There, there is no angel coming to Mary. It's Joseph dreaming. It's magi who follow a star. It's King Herod who murders holy innocents and sends the holy family off into Egypt to escape that dreaded horror. Each of the Gospels, in this case, are using themes in their Christmas story that are bringing forth theological truths that they are expounding in the rest of the Gospels. How they understand Jesus' life and ministry made a difference in the world. For Matthew, I'm going to suggest it seems apparent through the Christmas story that many of the hierarchical uh, nature of society is just given. That, of course, it would be to the elite, to the males, to those who are privileged, that this message would be delivered because that's who people would listen to. Luke's gospel is completely the opposite. It's not those who have status that receive the word. It's the common everyday folk, often the ones that were outcast or will be looked down upon. They're the ones that are closest with God and who God uses in, in the revelation of God's kingdom. Uh, much of Matthew's gospel being written to a more Jewish community has to do with a lot of those Hebrew connections. It is through that line of David looking for a Messiah that was going to bring a more political type of liberation, which eventually evolves into a more spiritual type of liberation. On the other hand, in Luke's gospel, we're not as concerned about those historical Hebrew roots as we are about um, redesigning society, that we're looking for those who are being cast down to be brought in, those who are outside of the covenant to, made to feel like part of God's loving care for them. It's about writing the injustices of the world. So each gospel writer has its, their own themes as they're bringing forward Jesus' story. And for our Christmas stories, we compare them to like an overture at the beginning of an opera, where you get little tastes of all the different types of music that are going to come in the rest of the gospel. In this case, stories from the rest of the gospel, the theology. We're getting a little glimpse into what is to come, some foreshadowing, a taste of what, what will be provided through this particular author's lens. They weren't really that concerned about the historical Jesus as much as they're telling us some really important theological truths about Jesus, about how they understood Jesus, Jesus' ministry, and what changes Jesus was responsible for and encouraging his followers to pick up after Jesus' death and resurrection. So on today's, in today's gospel, we hear how it is Joseph, who is very concerned about Mary, not wanting to... Um, follow the law strictly, not wanting to put her into a place where she was going to be publicly shamed for having a child before being married, and was quickly and quietly going to dismiss her and had to be challenged to think about that in a new way, who was told about the wonderful story of salvation in a dream. May we all listen with these gospels, what these gospel stories have to tell us with new ears May we return to the scriptures and read them each as a unique story so that we can truly learn the truths that they can provide us about God, God's plan of salvation, and why Jesus made a difference in that day and can continue to make a difference for us in our day. When we look at the scripture in new ways and challenge our old assumptions, it can surprise us with wonderful new messages and learnings that we might not have ever expected if we just keep following our sort of Sunday school understanding, when we really engage scripture, wrestle with the truths that are there and start to question our assumptions, we can be richly rewarded and can start to really understand what the authors were trying to get across to us in these stories. We're not watching an A&E biography on Jesus. We are going much, much deeper, understanding who Jesus is in the eyes of a community who fell in love with his story and worshipped him as the Son of God. Brothers and sisters, you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you, through his poverty, 
might become rich. Blessed be thou, Lord God of Israel, forever and ever. All that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine. All things come of thee, and of thine own have we given thee. Let us pray for Christ's holy Catholic Church. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we've been asked to pray for the retired clergy and widows of clergy of the Chignecto region. And in prayer partnership, we uphold St. George's Church, New Glasgow, and St. Andrew's Church, Locks Road, Dartmouth. Let us pray for peace on earth and for the unity of all Christian people. Let us pray for our missionaries at home and abroad. Let us remember before God those of our brothers and sisters who have departed this life and are at rest. We pray for the soul of the late Edith Ebsery, mother of the Reverend Edwin Ebsery, who died on Christmas Day. We pray that she may rest in peace and that her family may find comfort during this time of grief. Let us pray for all those who have died with COVID-19, for those who are sick, for those who care for them. We give thanks for those who are working diligently to care for all who are sick and those who are distributing the vaccines. And let us continue to pray for an end to this pandemic. And let us pray for the whole state of Christchurch militant here in earth. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all. We humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to lead all nations in the way of righteousness and so to guide and direct their governors and rulers that thy people may enjoy the blessings of freedom and peace. And grant unto thy servant Elizabeth our Queen and to all that are put in authority under her, that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, and especially to thy servants, Sandra, our diocesan, Linda, our primate, Justin of Canterbury, David our Metropolitan, our bishops, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and living word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. Prosper, we pray thee, all those who proclaim the gospel of thy kingdom among the nations, and to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence, 
they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, especially those for whom our prayers are desired. Adam, Audrey, Bernie, Catherine, Charlene, Chris, Jack, Jason, Joan, Judy, Laura, Lisa, Marilyn, Ron, Sarah, Sue, Vi, and for all those we name now, both aloud and in the silence of our hearts. We remember before thee, O Lord, all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, and we bless thy holy name for all who in life and death have glorified thee, beseeching thee to give us grace that rejoicing in their fellowship we may follow their good examples and with them be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead the new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all. We acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all of your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that labor and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Hear also what St. Paul saith. This is a true saying, and worthy of all to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John saith. If anyone sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, Creator and Preserver of all things because thou didst give Jesus Christ thine only Son to be born as at this time for us, who by the operation of the Holy Spirit was made very man of the substance of the Virgin Mary his mother, and that without spot of sin, to make us clean from all sin. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name evermore, praising thee and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of heaven, Heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is the one that cometh in the name of the Lord. 
Hosanna in the highest. Blessing and glory and thanksgiving be unto thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memorial of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, we, thy humble servants with all thy holy church, remembering the precious death of thy beloved Son, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again in glory, do make before thee in the sacrament of the holy bread of eternal life and the cup of everlasting salvation the memorial which he hath commanded. And we entirely desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And we pray that by the power of thy Holy Spirit, all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, Grant us thy peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him that takest away the sin of the world. Happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. For those of you who are watching at home and cannot be with us in person and would like to partake in spiritual communion, there is a prayer that you can find in the description of this video that you can say while those who have gathered for this recording receive the Holy Eucharist.
meeting to be considered as ordinance so ordered. Taking the official number of the facts, the right to appeal in the matter. Thank you. Thank you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee that Thou dost graciously feed us in these holy mysteries, with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, assuring us thereby of Thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are living members of His mystical body, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of Thy everlasting kingdom. And here we offer and present unto Thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee. And although we are unworthy, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Glory be to God on high, and in earth peace, goodwill towards all. We praise Thee, we bless Thee, we worship Thee, we glorify Thee. We give thanks to Thee for Thy great glory. O Lord God, Heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord, Thou only with Christ and Holy Ghost art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. 
Amen. The peace of God that passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Please be seated for announcements. This is our last worship of 2020. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling more hopeful for 2021 with the news of vaccines and such. I know it's not just instantly going to disappear on January 1st, but I'm really feeling much more hopeful than I would have even a month ago. So um, I hope we can dwell in that joy and that hope for the rest of next year. Um, there are some things to announce. One is another error was found in the list of uh, thank yous and dedications and memorials. This one was concerning, I believe, the flowers. Um, Frida Wyatt is what it sh was supposed to read. The A was left off, it became Fred. So Frida Wyatt, in whose memory a gift was made. So I do apologize for that error. It was corrected in the um, corrections that were sent out on Sunday, uh, but it didn't get announced at the service. It wasn't uh, uh, revealed until after that service was over. Uh, also, you should know that tomorrow, Wednesday, oh, sorry, on Wednesday, we will be drawing at one o'clock for the uh, raffle for the Clearwater gift card, and we're going to attempt to do it uh, via live streaming from our parish office. So sometime after lunch tomorrow, hopefully in and around one o'clock, you might get a notification on either YouTube and or Facebook uh, to join us for that drawing um, for the fundraiser. I don't think I have any other announcements for now. The liturgy has ended. Now the service begins. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Alleluia. Alleluia. I wish you a continued happy Christmas for the whole 12 days, a happy new year, and please join us on Sunday for our next service.